Okay, hello. Today I'm going to be doing a computer craft tutorial on, um, well, to start off with, I'm going to do the basics of computer craft, so how to open, save, and edit a program. So here I have my little computer here. Um, yeah, I'm currently running a soft bit of software that I've programmed, so I'll just terminate this. Okay, so when you first get the uh, computer, you'll see it comes up with uh, something like uh, Craft OS, and yours might be um, something like 1.3. This is running 1.3. Um, that's just saying that it runs 1.3. So, now, first of all, I'm going to teach you how to edit a file. So, to edit a file, we're going to do edit which then activates the API called edit and then whatever you want to call your file so I want to call this file test then hit enter and then it brings you up with a, uh, a blank file that's got press control to access menu so if we push control it says save or exit and you can use the arrow keys to navigate that if we exit and then if we type dir, dir that will give us um, all the files that are here currently I have got a few but as you can see the um, the test file that we created isn't there. That's because we haven't saved it. So if we edit test and then we save test and then exit, when we type dir, it will say test, and you can see just at the right. Um, now, if we delete, if we want to delete a file, we can do delete and then a file name test. And if we do dir, test is gone. So that's how to edit and um, delete files. If we go ahead and edit a file, uh, let's call it test again, we can write whatever we want uh, and then save the file. So let's say uh, we want to say to the user, um, hi there. What we should do is we'll just write print. Now there's two ways to use the print API. You can either use um, oh, uh, like this or you can use it like this. Uh, it's purely a matter of uh, choice, uh, if you want this one or this one. Personally, I use the one with the gap. Uh, it's just my personal preference, but it's up to you. They both work. Now, if we want to print hi there to the user, we're going to write hi there. But there's a problem with that. If we go and run test by writing test instead of edit test, it will run, and it says there's a problem. It's expecting something random. Um, that's because it's looking for the variable called hi there but there isn't a variable um hi there uh so to make this appear as text what you have to do is you have to put two of these funny things that go in the air and you have to close here so now it recognizes it as text rather than a variable so if we go ahead and write test hi there it prints hi there so if we edit test now uh, let's say we take these out and it's looking for a variable let's call this uh, variable um, hello. So we want to print the variable called hello. Now to print, it will now look for a variable. So we need to define our variable. So hello is equal to, I put the equal sign, and then what do you want it to be equal to? If you want it to be equal to six, say, or a number, then just put the number. If you want it to be equal to a text, then you have to put these two things. So text involves the two funny commas in the air. Numbers just involve uh, a pure number. So if we want hi, hello to be equal to six, when we run test, it should print six. There you go. Now if we say hello is equal to um, uh, a piece of text, hi there. Oh, we don't need to put the bracket, just the two um, commas in the air. It will now print. Hi there. That's basically a uh, substitution in mathematics. So that's basically a standard print uh, com uh, command on how to uh, print stuff and interact with the user. So if we just uh, delete test. There we go, it should be deleted. If we type DIR, it will say. Basically, DIR is means directory, and it will show you every file in the current directory. Now, if we do um, CD, which stands for change directory, let's say you want to go into OS, because OS is actually a file, that's where I got my uh, software from. So, change directory, OS. It now comes up with uh, OS. Obviously, you can use a disk and place a disk in it, do CD disk. 
Don't forget to type DIR. It gives me all the uh, files that um, are in the uh, category OS, and this basically runs my software. Now, if we want to get back, we do CD, change directory, space, dot, dot. That will just do that. The next one is clear. So, if we want to clear the screen, we do C L E R E, clear, push enter, then it will clear everything. Now, if we want to set the cursor position, um, we have to be in a scripting kind of thing. So, you can either do edit and then the file name, uh, and then you're in the scripting environment, or you can do lure, which is the interactive prompt kind of thing. Now, if you type in exit and then put these two things around it, it will exit you from it. So, if we just go back into Lua. Now, let's say we want to um, uh, clear the screen. If we type clear, it's not going to recognize it. Nil. Clear is equal to nil. So, if we want to clear, we're going to have to do term dot clear. So, the terminal, which is the computer, and clear it. And then these two brackets. And it will clear but as you've noticed it's cleared the screen but it's left us halfway down the screen so to set the cursor position uh, to the top all you have to do is term dot set cursor pause then the um the two brackets now what's common in programming is we um if i just yeah there we go is if you have a name so my name's james james Let's say we have two names that don't have a space, uh, so James uh, and, I don't know, uh, Trevor. Now, that's, oh, I haven't even spelled Trevor right. Now, that's, that's okay, but programmers would say that's bad programming. So, if that's going to be good, then what we need to do is the second uh, word would be a capital. So James would be without any capitals, and then Trevor would be with a capital. If we had dot, then we don't have to put a capital. We would just write another name. So, I don't know, um, uh, Tom. So, that, that's just one thing about programming. So, as you'll notice, if we go back to turn dot set cursor position i have used term without any um capitals dot set which doesn't have any capitals and then cursor has a capital because it's a um it's a new word but doesn't have a space in between it and then pause stands for position but doesn't have any um but it's still connected but doesn't have a space in between it so term dot set cursor position where do we want to set the cursor position to? It doesn't know, so it's saying bad argument. Int expected got nil. So we're going to give it a cursor position. Let's say we want the top uh, left hand corner. That will be 1, 1. So the x is 1 and the y is 1. Then it bangs us at the top. Uh, let's say we want to get it uh, slightly down the page. You can do term dot set cursor uh, pause to. No, the x can be 1, and then the y could be 6, and it should set us halfway down, there you go. And then if we want to do the same thing, but let's say we want to move the x to, I don't know, 10, it now dumps us here, uh, which is a bit random. So, in your programming, if you ever want to clear the screen and then set the cursor position to the top, the best thing to include in your script is clear, then these two things. Um, okay, that's a bit... Oh yeah, sorry. Term dot clear. I should know that by now. Then term dot set cursor position to one one, and that will then set you at the top. Uh, but it would clear it because obviously you don't actually see the script. Uh, if we exit the lower prompt by calling exit, now if we just clear the screen, if we type programs. It will show us every single program that's on the um, uh, yeah, so on the computer, I think. Um, maybe not. I'm not sure. Uh, but it shows you all the APIs as well. Now, if you want to see all the APIs, then you can do API and then S, and it will show all the APIs. So you've got text tools, shell, peripheral, I/O, disk, bit, colors, FS, mass, rednet, or something like that. Um, so as you can see, they're all here. Uh, these basically help you do stuff in your program. So if we, um, uh, what should we do next? 
let me demonstrate one of these APIs. Demonstrate one of these APIs. Uh, so, for instance, print does the uh, print command. Uh, let's say, okay, let's come out of here. I'll just shut it down. Uh, right. So let's say we come out of here. I'll just speed myself up. And uh, let's dump a random computer down. Uh, I'll tell you what, I'll go to my labs and we'll do that. Oh, we'll probably hear that music. Right, so here's a password program that I made. You enter the right password and it lets you in. There we go. Right, okay, so let's just, um, okay, I can demonstrate one of the uh, APIs here. So let's say, uh, okay, if we get a monitor, then place it beside. There we go, we have our, ooh, hello. There we go, we have our monitor. So if we want to make stuff display on the other monitor, let's uh, quickly make a program. Edit, start. Up. Now, for your information, startup. If it finds a file called startup, it will automatically run that file when um, the computer starts up. So, let's make a peripheral. I cannot say that word properly. Uh, so that it will display it onto the uh, onto the monitor. So the way we're going to do that is a variable. So let's say our variable is equal to mon because that just seems sensible for a monitor. Mon is equal to peripheral. I can't speak and say that. No, uh, yep. Dot wrap. So it's going to get the peripheral and it's going to wrap. Uh, and what sides are um, monitor on? What's on the right? So we're going to type right, and it will be, and it will be uh, as a text value. So these the two uh, comments in the air. Now, if you just want to put a variable, then you could do something like side is equal to right so it'll append instead of side side it will append right so uh, for example side is equal to right so all we need to do now is write side and uh, with no commas in the air because it's a variable so one is equal to preferable wrap dot side now um, if we want to actually turn now we want to actually put the um, what we're going to display in the future onto the monitor we're going to do terminal dot redirect then we're going to redirect it to mon now mon is equal to peripheral wrap side side is equal to right so that is now um put everything onto the the uh, right monitor if we reboot the pc it will just come out with craft os and as you can see it's now working on the monitor so if we type anything in here it's on the monitor there now the best way to get out of this is to do lua you can just probably about see on the right monitor. Then you want to do term dot restore and then two brackets. So if I just show you, um, well, yeah, that, that should be term dot restore. And you hit enter and it comes back here. So we'll just exit it as a little prompt. Okay, so let's go back to uh, our startup file. Let's say we now want to print something. So we want to print hello. We're going to do print hello close and that'll be it so start up um mm. oh yeah that, that did work i think there you go hello so that's a simple thing of uh, peripherals um so this computer here uh use a peripheral and that's the monitor on the right uh, if i just uh, show you somehow there you go. So it's just saying um, uh, something there. Right. Next, I'm going to show you. Um, oh, my mushroom's gone a bit pear shaped. Uh, I'm going to show you next. Um, actually, yeah, I'll show you what you can do with um, what you can do with computer craft. In that case, I need to head back to my labs. Stupid me, I shouldn't have left. Look, I can't get out of this place. Oh, come on. There we go. Got it. 
Then I just run over here, my quantum armor. Then sign ourselves in again. Ooh. Oh, actually, I know what we'll do next. We'll, um, how to save stuff from a disc. Okay, so what I did uh, earlier on is I made a quick fruit machine. Yes, I did. I made a fruit machine. Um, so if we go DIR. Oh, yeah, there you go, fruit. So if we do fruit, it's now got a peripheral wrap, so it's coming up with a, um, it's coming up with an error. Let's say we want to save that file um, to a disk. What we're going to do is we're going to insert a disk into the drive. Like that. And we're going to do um, copy. And the file is called fruits. Fruit to disk slash because disk is the directory and we want to call it start up so whenever the disk is in the uh, thing it will just automatically start it up and it should do so if we do change directory disk then we do dir it comes up with the startup file let's do eject write which will eject our disk automatically there you go and um let's just shut to reboot computer, just type reboot. Okay. So, um, I should have come better prepared, but still. Right, uh, if I just grab a uh, mon oh, I've already got one, uh, disk, drive, disk, disk drive then. Um, right, the peripheral wrap for this is on the bot uh, uh, back, uh, just because I wanted it to be. Come on. Oh. There we go. Right, I'm going to insert the drive there. And it came up with an error, woohoo. Um, I'll take do what, let's just do this. So, we put our monitor on there, just reboot the computer by control, uh, control R. And it's come up with rest button to start, woohoo. Now, as I can remember rightly, uh, let's get nice blocks on like sponge, uh, redstone, lamp. Yeah, something like that. Okay. Uh, yeah, that'll do. Um, I'll just quickly put it. I say um a lot. Okay, so let's pretend this is a hand building. We need a button as well. There we go. So push button to start. And it doesn't work because I've forgotten the redstone. Just make sure this works. Well, there we go. Push button to start. Then it gives you a randomly generated number. You lose. Oh, and it's failed. <laughs> okay, uh, that wasn't supposed to fail, so I'll just turn dot redirect. Nope, does that spell correct? Term dot redirect. That should do good okay this 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 failed um uh ooh, give me a second let me work out why this is failing me term dot redirect okay so that's not working something's gone dreadfully wrong let's terminate the program and let's go to Lua, you probably can't, yeah, I can't see anything. Turn dot redirect, I'm doing this from memory. Oh, come on. Okay, easy solution, just take this out. Reboot. And put this back in. No, uh, yeah, the reason why it errored, because uh, it's trying to run the startup file again, but it couldn't find the startup file because it's actually on the disk. So we need to do copy disk slash start up to just start up. Now, now if we take this out and reboot the PC, it should work. Press button start. Oh, I failed. And um, there you go, it just goes back. Now, you could attach this so it drops an item or something, uh, but that takes a bit of time. And as I've only got a few minutes left of recording, uh, actually, just a few seconds, damn it. Uh, I'm just going to quickly attach this redstone wire going down. Uh, actually, I'm going to make this go to the next tutorial. Okay, so 
be back in a sec. Okay, so now I'm uh, I'm back. Uh, recording time just ran out. So hopefully now, if we get the right answer, the lamp should come on. Or you could wear it up so it drops an item or something. Let's just see when we get an item. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. It does take a while. It just randomly generates. Ah, number. Then we should see the light come on for a few seconds. Something. Oh, maybe not. Well, you can always make it uh, set an output, so it will output something. Uh, it might have been just server lag or something random. Uh, now to show you the programming. So if we just reboot, we terminate, we type lua, and we do term dot redirect. You know what, stuff it. Um, we'll just go the easy way. Uh, yeah, oh, no. yeah, try that. Okay, if we do change directory disk. Oh. Hello. Oh. Built flag. Uh, just check. The, yeah, okay, so if we do edit start up. This is the um, this is the code that runs it. Uh, it's very simple. Basically, we have the peripheral wrap at the top, as I was showing you just a second ago. We have print button, press button to start. R is equal to um, OS dot pull event and pull event the redstone. So what OS dot pull event does is it it waits for something to happen, whether it's a redstone signal come in, a file coming in, a, a um uh, a key being pressed or whatever. Um, now we want it to only detect redstone inputs, so we type redstone in there. Now a is equal to mass dot random one to three. And if you don't have, uh, if you just have that, it will generate a random number within one. Uh, sorry, zero and one because it's binary. But we want it to generate a random number within one to three to give you a fair amount of chance to win. B is equal to mass dot random. And C is also equal to master random. So master random will um, randomly generate a number. So it will clear the screen. It will set cursor position to two one because it needs to be slightly in. Um, it will then print these two uh, lines here just to make it look a bit nicer. It will then print the value of A, which is equal to master random, and it will print the value of B and print the value of C. And then it will do. It will then clear the screen. It will sleep 1.5 seconds. Sorry. Then it will clear the screen. And then it will do, if A is equal to, then we need two equals, otherwise it will error, B and A must be equal to C, then, only then, can it print, you win. And it will set the output, oh, I set the output to the bottom, that's why the light didn't come on. It will sleep one, and set the output to the bottom, false, and it will show up run startup, which is the same thing. Else, if A is not equal to B and A is not equal to C, if it's not the same value, um, then it will print, um, you lose, and it will sleep for one second, then it will just reboot. And that's, that's basically it for that. So this is just a quick example of what you can do with uh, computer craft. Uh, I will be explaining that in more depth. Uh, this has been a uh, quick tutorial on how to uh, program very simply. I'll do more. Uh, hopefully, I'll get them out today. Maybe not. Uh, last thing, I'll just show you my little game that I knocked up. It took me a few days. Oh. There we go. Uh, yes, on here. Okay, um. Uh, change directory. Okay, here we go. Uh, I think it's game. So, uh, if we run game. Hmm. Hmm. That's weird. Oh. Okay then. Oh, I know why. Because that's a directory, so we need to do change directory. Game. Uh, yeah, that's that's good. Okay. Uh, directory. What's it got in here? Yep, that's good. Game. 
Yeah. Okay, so it says print on your name. So I'm going to Tony Lenzo. It prints at the top right hand corner. Welcome, Tony Lenzo. Your coins are zero, your messages are zero, and your health is 20. Now we have a little snail which can move using our um, keys and we can basically get him into the hut. New message Hello there, I am the wise old wizard of the pole. Could you deliver this message to John the Butcher? I'll give you 10 coins. So, John the Butcher lives in the house of the bee. So, you deliver the message. Ah, thanks, I've been waiting for this for a long time. Seems he had forgot. Oh well, thanks for helping. Now to go and collect our coins. Thanks, I must not forget messages again. Here's 10 coins for your efforts. Actually, I'll give you 12. And as you can see over here, it goes to 12. Now we can exit the game by just going along to the exit sign. Now our next level is a shop, basically. We can have a shop where we can keep going backwards and forth. Then you can buy whatever you want from here. Um, there's only two items at the moment. So you have a sword uh, and a boat. So I'm going to purchase a boat uh, and then a sword. Now it will deduct your coins here then give you a boat. But let's say we want to buy a sword. We can't now buy one because we haven't got enough coins. Let's just exit the shop. Go to the TNT. Your health drops five points. Uh, but we won't show you that because otherwise it doesn't work. Hello there, we are preparing for a battle. I will pay you 50 coins if you help out. It's best to have a sword if you don't already. Here's 10 coins. Visit the other hut to start. So I can now visit the other hut without sword because all I have is a boat at the moment. Um, but I can go back and purchase the sword because it's given me 10 coins. Um, so that should be enough to buy a, um, yeah, it is enough to buy a sword. So I can just purchase the sword, paid for item. And we just go to exit and just come down here and go into the other TP kind of thing, hut, whatever you call it. Uh, yeah, okay, so it's like literally you have to revisit this TP for some reason. Uh, I need to sort that out. Hmm, that here we go. Welcome, let's start. So it will now send you to the battle where the C is coins. So if you look at my coins over here, it's got seven. I go into it and it gives me ten. The TNT will again blow me up five, and lose health five, five health points. And I'll just get this other coin. Now give me 15. Then we've got these horrible monsters. Um, so, yeah, it gives you your monster's health. If you have a sword, it will decrease the monster's health by three points. If you don't, it will only decrease it by one. And the monster is already taking health away from me. <coughs> but I've defeated that one. So I can now go and defeat this one. Die monster. My health's gone down to eight. I'm just defeat this one by just moving around it. That's gone. And last of all, but not least, well, yeah, least, I uh, just defeat this one. There we go. So my health is now 3.5. Uh, the monster is dead. All the monsters are dead. I have some coins. And um, that, that's as far as I've got up to at the moment. Now I'll just show you what happens if we go into the TNT. Bang! Watch TNT. Five health points gone, but because I've only got 3.5 move and I die. So that's just a quick tutorial on what you can actually do in uh, computer class. Thanks for listening. See you next time.